Hello, in today's video we will be covering the hot end and bed of the Voron V2. The Voron V2 and V1 use the same hot end assembly. This allows you to swap pre-assembled hot ends between the two printers if you wish. For the hot end itself, you do have the option of a E3D V6 style or an E3D V6 style with the volcano attachment. Currently, these are the only two compatible hot ends for the Voron at this time. The Mark 10 hot end, uh, Hexagon hot end, or any other manufacturer uh, currently are not supported and will not work on your Voron printer. For sourcing your hot end, you have the option of either purchasing a legitimate E3D, such as this one here, through one of their resellers, or another option is on AliExpress through Triangle Labs. This one right here is a Triangle Labs Volcano kit. When you purchase the kit, it comes with everything required to build your hot end assembly. So we do recommend starting with a kit and then purchasing any nozzles or accessories separately. For the Voron, usually the hot end heater and thermistor that comes with the kit is sufficient. And if you wish to use the sock, that is uh, an option as well. Quality wise, if you do go with the clone option, we do recommend sticking with the Triangle Labs. I have been using Triangle Labs hot ends, nozzles uh, for months now. And honestly, I can't tell the difference between a legitimate E3D product and the Triangle Labs ones. They both function perfectly. Product fit and finishment are stellar. And these are about a quarter of the price of a legitimate E3D kit. One upgrade we do recommend looking at from Triangle Labs though is they do have a titanium heat break. It goes for under $5 currently and it helps a lot when it comes to heat creep issues when printing with higher temperature filaments. While we are talking about hot ends, I will cover the hot end fan itself. The one in front of you here is a Sunon 40mm by 40mm by 20mm thick fan. You can use a 20mm thick fan on the Voron V2, it is supported. Now one thing that does come up often is people do wish to use Noctua fans to keep their hot ends cool because they are quiet. We do not recommend doing that. The reason for that is the Voron V2 is an enclosed printer, so the air that it is pushing is already relatively warm. Another reason is with the design of the hot end, you require static pressure to force the air through it around the heatsink and out through the ducts in the back. Noctua fans, while quiet, lack the static pressure to force air through enclosed areas. They are great for heat cases or open air movement. However, in a confined space, they lack. Uh, these do cause heat creep issues as you are unable to properly cool your heat sink. We recommend sticking with fans that are designed for servers. Now, these are a little bit louder. This is a 7.7 CFM fan and it does have a rating of around 21 decibels. Uh, with your printer though, most of the time if you are printing ABS for example, your door is closed and the printer is mostly enclosed if the door is open. So this does help keep down the noise and most people I know would rather have a great looking print that's fully functional versus a slightly sloppy looking print due to heat creep, but a slightly quieter printer. Now moving on to the bed, the bed of your printer is a cast aluminum tooling plate. Mike 6, ATP5, those are common brand names of cast aluminum tooling plate that you will be looking for while you are sourcing your bed. You need to ensure that it is a cast aluminum tooling plate and not simply cold rolled aluminum or an aluminum sheet. The reason for that is the material properties of cast aluminum are more stable to heating, they are much, much flatter than a sheet of aluminum. The size you're gonna be looking for is 5 16 thick. You can use thinner or thicker. However, the thinner the plate, the more prone it will be to warping under heat. And the thicker the plate, the longer your heat up and cool down time will be. So 5 16 thick is a good middle ground. Now when you get your plate, one of the first things you're gonna to have to do is ensure there's no burrs or sharp edges on it. Either run a stone or a file over it to knock off those, and you will have to either drill or mill some holes for mounting to your frame. This bed was originally in a Voron V1, and that's what these holes are from, so I will be redoing those holes 
for mounting to the V2 spec, and that's also why you do not see a uh, print surface on this plate at this time. For print surface, we do recommend using a PEI sheet. You can source these on Amazon uh, in the US from Prozic or CS Hide. Uh, outside of the US, you will have to look around. Ensure that it is proper PEI. A lot of it sold is actually a polycarbonate sheet. Uh, Gizmo Dorks had that issue a while back where they were selling PEI that was actually uh, polycarbonate. It will not function the same. With your PEI sheet, when you do receive it, um, you will notice it'll probably be a little bowed, but that doesn't matter because you're adhering it directly to the bed. Depending on where you source your PEI from, it may come with the 3M adhesive pre-applied. Otherwise, you will have to apply a sheet of 3M 468MP adhesive to the bed and then apply the PEI afterwards. Ensure you remove any protective films on both ends of the uh, adhesive and PEI. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna have a bad day. A common question from those in Europe is there is a vendor that sells pre-machined plates to spec with a PEI impregnated surface. While the plates are good and their machining is well, we do not recommend getting the PEI impregnated surface. A uh, few on the Discord have had those plates in the past and essentially you have to really crank the temperature up for ABS to stick uh, around 130 degrees Celsius, which is not recommended and it tends to wear out. So we do recommend if you go with that provider that you simply get a bare plate and apply a sheet of PEI to it afterwards. If you set up your bed to spec, this is what the bottom will look like. As you can see, I have a silicone heater mat applied to it. This one is a Kinovo brand. We do recommend Kinovo. Uh, they have a vendor storefront on AliExpress, eBay, and directly through their own site. Very high quality. They come with a built-in thermistor for temperature. Uh, they do have the option of adding a thermal fuse built in. However, we don't recommend going with that. I'll touch on that in a minute. For adhering your silicone heater mat to the back, again, we recommend cleaning your plate perfectly using a degreaser as well as a isopropyl alcohol, for example, to ensure there is zero residue on it. What I like to do before I adhere anything to my bed is actually go over it with like a scotch brake pad and just kind of scuff it up a little bit. This ensures that the adhesive has something to bite into. Uh, you don't want to actually scratch the bed, but a scotch brake pad just kind of scuffs it up enough so that it can adhere properly. Now, if you build your bed to spec, this is how it will look on the bottom. However, there are some things you may want to look into. First off, instead of simply running these wires directly under the bed into uh, the power and your controller board, as you can see here, I have some quick connects. This allows me to remove the plate without having to go under the hood or flip the printer over for maintenance. Um, for the heater, ensure that your connector is rated for the amperage of the heater. For safety, uh, two things that I do recommend adding are a thermal fuse and a ground. Now for the thermal fuse, as I touched on earlier, you can get a heater map from Kinovo with one built in. However, uh, in testing, we have found that they don't pop off essentially at the value that they're rated for. So for example, one that says it'll pop at 130 degrees Celsius will actually get to a much higher temp, 140 potentially, before it pops. That is not good. Reason for that is this is attached with 3M adhesive above 130 degrees Celsius. The adhesive can fail and this can come off the plate. So what we do recommend is using one of these. These are thermal fuses. You can find them on AliExpress. They are very cheap. You can get about five of these for a few dollars. And these have been tested and they do uh, pop at the rated temperature. This one right here will go off at 135 degrees Celsius. These are the ones I use. To mount these, you simply drill and tap a hole in your plate. Uh, ensure you don't drill all the way through the plate. And then you would wire this in line with the uh, power in or hot wire to the heater mat. Don't wire it to the neutral wire.
The reason I like these is once these pop, they do not re-engage. You can get thermal fuses that reset once the temperature lowers. However, as this bed is mains powered, thermal runaway will not protect you. So what that means is if your SSR fails, for example, and juice keeps constantly running to this, you want the power to die and stay dead. Otherwise, you'll essentially keep heating up, cooling, heating up, cooling, uh, until you come across your printer and find that it's malfunctioning. If this does pop, you simply, uh, if it's a fault of your own, for example, you accidentally increase the bed temperature without setting the proper firmware safeties, you can simply cut and remove this and simply solder in a new one and screw it down. Another safety option is the ground. We do recommend adding a ground. Uh, you can mount it through one of the bed mounting holes or you can drill and tap a separate hole. And what this does is essentially you attach a wire with, uh, I like to use the full ring connector. That way it cannot pull off. I don't have one on hand right now. And you mount a wire to your bed plate directly, metal on metal, and you wire this to the ground. It's right here on your power supply. This way, if there is a short, it is grounded and this is a safety feature that you should not overlook. Now for a quick example, uh, I do have a video on my channel about how to drill uh, the mounting holes for your plate. However, I will do a quick example here on how to attach the thermal fuse. So we'll mount it, say about there, that's plenty of room to add a wire in and try and keep everything tucked underneath. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is when you mount this, you want it to be close but not directly touching the heater mat, a few millimeter air gap. And with drilling in metal, you do want to use a center punch. This way when you start drilling, your drill bit will not wander. If you do not have a center punch, uh, most smaller taps do have a pointed end that you can use as the center punch. This will be a three millimeter hole. You need to use a drill that is 2.5 millimeters or closest decimal equivalent of inch standard uh, to drill the hole before tapping. Ensure you do not drill all the way through the plate. If you do, um, this is why I recommend doing any drilling to your plate before you apply the PEI. Simply chamfer up the hole and apply the PEI over it. It'll just be a cosmetic blemish. Now these are metal chips, you wanna ensure that nothing gets stuck in your heater mat. You don't want anything to short. Uh, so another option is of course, do all uh, drilling and milling to your plate before you apply the heater. And you will need a M3.5 tap and tap handle. If you do not have a tap, simply drill the hole a little bit oversized, and that way the threads from the screw will cut their own threading into the plate. Aluminum is pretty soft. Now you do not need to drill and tap too deep. You're simply holding on a thermal fuse. There are no forces on it. So as long as you get a few threads in and it's not gonna come loose, it will be sufficient. And then with a screw, you simply screw it down. And that is how you mount a thermal fuse and for the ground you simply do the same procedure for mounting the ground to the plate. Thank you again for watching. If you have any questions on what you have just seen or wish for me to go over anything else with the Voron V2 in more detail, please feel free to let me know either below or my name is Uber Nero on the Voron Discord. Thank you and have a great day.